If you were a computer, you would understand those blinking lights. But since you're a human, let me translate. It said, hello world, hello YouTube. Welcome to my channel. This Arduino project involves taking a message in the form of a string and converting that message to its ASCII representation and printing that result to these seven LEDs. Computers can only understand the binary number system, so every letter and symbol on the keyboard is actually mapped to a number. And remember that that number has to be in binary. This circuit is simple. All we need is seven LEDs, and the positive lead from the leftmost LED goes to pin number three. This one goes to four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. All of the LEDs are grounded through the ground bus on the breadboard. Once you have this circuit set up, let's jump over to the IDE and start the coding section of this project. So the first step in this project is gonna to be to complete the setup function. So we're gonna use the pin mode and we're gonna go and declare every pin on that circuit we built as an output. And there's only seven pins, so let's just copy this code down seven times and change all these pin numbers to correspond to the actual pins we're using. So we're using pins three to nine and all of them are outputs. We're also going to use the serial.begin at 9600 to allow us to use the serial monitor. Next, we're going to go into our global scope and define the message that we want to print out to the Arduino. So we're going to say const char star message equals let's just create something simple like hello at the moment now this is a string and with the way this project works is we're going to parse this string and go through every character and convert it to ascii so let's first find a way to actually parse it first before we worry about printing it out to the arduino so we're going to say that for let's actually write this out in comments first for every character in the string, print to serial monitor. So this is gonna be a for loop. So for int i, we're gonna say as long as i is less than the length of this string, so that's gonna be string length of message, and every iteration through this loop increments it by one, we're gonna just say serial.println, and let's say message at the ith index. And once we actually compile and run this, if we open the serial monitor, we see that that string is being parsed. So it's printing out every individual character of hello on a repeated loop. So now that we have the string, what we want to do is convert that character to an integer. And that is incredibly easy to do. All we have to do is cast it to an integer. And now if we upload this, we see that we get a sort of similar thing, except for it's printing out, instead of hello, it's printing out numbers or integers. And if you look at an ASCII table, these numbers actually correspond to hello. So an uppercase H is 72, and a lowercase L is 108, which is repeated twice here. So perfect, now we have that integer that corresponds to the string value. Now what we want to do is convert that integer to binary and print it to the circuit that we built. So we're going to be using a pre-made function here that I've already written in a previous video. And if you want to find out more about how this function works, I will link that video at the appropriate timestamp in the description below. But basically what it's doing is it's accepting a decimal number and iterating through using the modulus operator by two and storing the zero or one value in a binary array. And once you have that binary array, you're writing to the LEDs that we defined in our pin mode. So just to test this out, let's actually just call this decimal to binary write function. Let's comment out our for loop that we have, and let's call decimal to binary write. And let's go all the binary values. Let's add a delay in there to make this a little bit easier to see. So let's call all of the binary values from 1 to 64, which is the leftmost value in binary for 7 bits. This is 1, 2, 3, and I forgot 8, so let's put 8 in there somewhere in between 4. Mm, let's put it here. 
obviously. Okay, so now if we actually upload this code to the Arduino, let's take a look at what we get. And we're getting an error because, mm, put double brackets, okay. So now let's upload this to the Arduino and see what we get. We're basically lighting up the LEDs from right to left because we called the function to start at one and increment all the way to 64. And sorry for the poor video quality, but you can still see the main idea of the code that we wrote and the result that we're getting. So what we just did proves that this decimal to binary write function lets us write an integer value to the Arduino circuit that we constructed. So now let's go ahead and clear all this code out and uncomment this code here. And let's take this int message at the ith index and instead of serial printing that out, let's actually plug that into that digital, uh, excuse me, decimal to binary, decimal to binary write. Let's plug in that value that we were plugging into the serial monitor, and now let's print that to the Arduino circuit. So let's upload this and see what we get. We can see that our LEDs are lighting up, but nothing's turning off. And that's because we don't have a way to actually clear the values once we've written once we've written them to this circuit. So let's define a function called void blank LEDs. And this function is going to just turn off all the LEDs that we have written. So let's start at pin three and let's actually make this a for loop just to make it a little bit more elegant. So let's say for int i equals three we're going to be saying that this loop continues as long as i is less than 10 because we want it to loop through pins 3 through 9. So we're going to say from 3 to 10 and increment it by 1 every time. Let's say digital write i to low. And this is going to write every pin from 3 up until 9 because it's less than 10 to low. And after this completes, let's add a delay to give the Arduino a little bit of time to sort of reset and not make the changes from turning on and off LEDs too drastic. So now every time we write the LED we want to call that blank LEDs method or function to actually clear down the LEDs so that we get sort of a blinking effect. And now one more thing before we upload this, let's define a delay so that every time we finished a message, I can't spell worth anything right now, so delay. Let's clear it for two seconds so that every time we finish this message, we get the LEDs to shut off. So that way it lets us know that uh, basically when this thing is starting over again, it gives us a little bit of an indicator. And now if we upload this code, let's take a look at what happens. We're getting sort of drastic changes in the LEDs and that's okay because this message is pretty short. So if we made, let's say, a longer message called, let's just call it, um, this is going to be a test, how well do these LEDs blink? And let's change that delay to a thousand. And now let's see what we get on the LED board. We're still getting very fast pulses. So let's add another delay right between, right after we blank the LEDs, let's make it, uh, let's say 50. And let's just test this to see what happens when it pops up. That's more like it. We're getting a blinking effect and it's still showing up as visible instead of just flashing very, very rapidly. And that's because we added that last delay of 50 milliseconds. And this just makes it a little bit more readable and visible to the eyes to what's going on. We want there to be a blinking effect, but we don't want it to be so fast that we have no idea what's going on. That's going to do it for this project, everyone. Once you have that code on your Arduino, type in any message you want, and the ASCII values will be printed out to your LEDs. Thanks, everyone, for watching, and if you have any questions, please feel free to leave them in the comments below. Thanks again, everyone, for watching.